Hi, my name is Chris Beauchamp and I'm a mobile developer with KeyCloud and I've also been an independent iPhone developer for a number of years, actually since the very first iPhone SDK came out. So I love building apps and I'm pretty excited about one of these new features that was released in iOS 7. And it kind of flew under the radar with the, the fanfare of the release. But for developers, it's actually a pretty cool little tool and it's called SpriteKit. And what SpriteKit is, is essentially a framework for 2D game development. And it's given to us in such a way that's very familiar to existing iPhone developers. And it provides things like a physics engine, textures, particles, things like this that are essential for building a great game. So I wanted to build a little video series uh, demoing SpriteKit and showing the capabilities of it and how quick and simple it is to actually build a game with this. So the way this is going to work is it'll be a series of videos uh, in, in manageable slices, hopefully five to 10 minutes each, that will take you through the process of building an entire production ready game. So the end result is going to look something like this, what we have on our screen. And many of you might be familiar with this, with this block-like game where you try to connect as many colors as you can. So as I start playing here, uh, you'll see the blocks fall into place. And the idea of the game is to get as many blocks as we can uh, before the time runs out. So very simple game. Uh, you know, we'll do some polish and we'll do things like that later on. And this will be entirely open sourced. So feel free to contribute or take parts of, parts of it as your own uh, to build your own game. So we'll get started with the very first steps, obviously. Uh, you'll need Xcode and the iOS environment set up on your machine. And we're going to go ahead and create a new Xcode project. Let me get this in the frame here. And Apple, they provide a template right out of the box called SpriteKit Game. So we're going to go ahead and build one of those. And we'll call this key box. We'll find where we need to save it. It's key box. So we're going to go ahead and build and run this uh, to see what Apple gives us from the template. And you can see it's a very basic uh, layout here. It just says, hello world. And at the bottom, it's showing statistics about how many nodes or how many objects or sprites are on the screen. And also the frames per second, which is required for developers to optimize performance and make sure the gameplay is very, very smooth on their users' devices. So already we have something uh, from the Apple template. So we're going to go ahead and customize it and make it our own. So you'll see a few different classes over here, the standard app delegate and view controller, and this my scene. And my scene is an SK scene, which is sprite kit scene. And this will be where we lay out uh, all the features, all the views within our game. So we'll go into the implementation file and clean up our layout a little bit. So this is some of it, Apple's existing template code, so we'll get rid of that. And we'll also get rid of the label uh, that showed hello world on the screen. So now if we build and run it again, you'll just see we have this empty canvas, no nodes running at 60 frames per second. So how we're gonna start is by showing how the physics engine works within SpriteKit. And it's actually very, very simple. So it won't take very long. And what we'll do is have a single block falling onto a floor. So that's what we'll accomplish in this, in this first tutorial. So it'll show off how the physics work and not only gravity, but how, other, how objects interact with one another. So what we wanna do first is define the attributes for the world uh, that we'll be providing within this scene. And in SpriteKit, it's called the physics world. So we'll go self.physicsworld. And from here, we can set things like gravity uh, so we'll go ahead and set gravity using a vector. And we want gravity going just down in normal, in a normal acceleration or a normal force. Now we want to create the block that we're, is going to be affected by gravity and fall down to the ground. So we'll do that by creating an SK sprite node.
And we want to make sure that this block is affected by the gravity of the world, so we'll add a physics body to it. And we'll make the physics body the same size as the block. So think of the physics body as what's being affected by gravity. So it can be a different size than the actual node or the sprite that you're showing, uh, but it'll be the thing that's being pulled down by gravity. So you can change its mass, you can change its density, its friction, all these kind of things. So it reacts to the world and it reacts to the objects around it in different ways. But for the sake of example here, we're going to leave it very, very simple and just create a standard physics body and leave it as is to see what happens. So we'll go ahead and add this to our scene. Just like you're adding a view, a sub view to a UI view. So we're just going to add a child and add this block sprite node uh, to our scene. So now we've created the physics world and we've added a block to it and the block will react to the physics world and hopefully it'll fall off the screen uh, as soon as we build and run. Oops, it's falling the wrong way. Ah, so what happened here, I set gravity to one instead of negative one. So the gravity was actually acting in the wrong direction. So it showed the box going up instead of down. So we'll go ahead and fix that. Try it again. And there we have a falling block falling right off of our screen. Now let's say we want to have gravity affect the block more drastically. So we want the block to fall faster. So let's change gravity to eight times uh, the normal force. And the block falls much faster off the screen. So you can alter these kind of variables to have the objects within your world react in different ways. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave it at one. The next thing we want to do is add a floor, so the block actually lands on the floor and reacts with another object. So we'll go ahead and do that here by creating another SK sprite node. And we want to give this a physics body as well, so it'll react with the, the, the objects around it. And we also want to center it at the bottom of our screen, so we'll put it in the proper position. And we'll go ahead and add this to our scene as well. So let's build and run and see what happens. If you notice down there, the floor actually fell off the screen as well. And that's because we gave it a physics body and it's reacting to gravity just as the block is. So how do we make the floor stay where it is? Well, it's a pretty simple attribute. Uh, we want to leave the physics body in there because we still want the floor to react to the block when it falls down on it. But we can make the floor not react to gravity by making it not dynamic. So if we set our physics body dynamic equals false, then the floor won't be affected by gravity, but it will still be affected by or the block will still be affected by the floor. So this will make much more sense here when we build and run one more time. And the floor stays, the block comes down, and the block reacts to the floor being there. So this is already a good start, and we're showing how physics is very easily implemented here in about 10 to 20 lines of code. We have two objects that are reacting to one another and the gravity of the world around them. Now there are a lot of different attributes that you can play around with with the physics body and the physics world and I'll show an example of one quick one right here that's called restitution and what the restitution does is it determines how much energy the object loses on contact with another object. So again we'll, we'll kind of describe this by showing an example. So if we change the blocks restitution, uh, we'll go block Institution. And we're going to bump this up. The standard, I think, is 0 0.2, so we'll give it 0 0.8. And we'll build and run it and see what happens. And our block should bounce really high. Ooh, there it goes. And conversely, if you set it to 0, uh, it won't bounce quite as high. Boom. And it hits a little flatter. 
all these attributes you can start to play around with so you get the, the exact feel that you're looking for for your game. And for our game, we actually found that the ideal restitution is zero for our blocks and our floor. So we'll go ahead and set that now. And this is just looking ahead to how all the blocks will react together uh, once our game is a little farther. So we'll do the same for floor. And you'll notice that the, it hits pretty flat now. Boom. Now that's the end of our first part of the tutorial. Uh, so we went over how to create a sprite kit game within Xcode, and then how to set up a physics world and have a couple of objects reacting with one another. And again, this is the first step in creating the game that I showed at the beginning. So we'll move on to the next parts of the tutorial and this will all build on itself uh, to end up creating that full game. Now, as I mentioned before, this is all open source. So I'll post the link here up on the YouTube video and you can go into our GitHub page and what I'll do is I'll tag, uh, tag this release, tag this commit. So if you just wanna look at this tutorial without the rest of the game attached to it, go and look for this tag that's on the screen above and you'll be able to download the code as like a snapshot of this tutorial. So it'll make it pretty easy for you to just take this into bite-sized pieces and tweak it and learn from it at your own pace. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to start to actually create our game board. Uh, so we'll have rows and columns of blocks and they'll all be reacting with one another. So we'll start to actually see some gameplay in the next, next part of the tutorial. So stay tuned and, and check out the rest of the series. Thanks for watching and happy coding.